Let's talk about acids and bases. Get out your notebook. Here's the essential question you should write at the top of the page. What are the various properties of acids and bases? We're going to start off listing some of the properties, and then we're going to go more in-depth on many of these properties throughout these notes. Let's talk about acids. Acids have a sour taste. You probably witnessed this if you've ever tasted a lemon before. Vinegar also tastes sour. Acids typically burn or sting when you touch them. You probably felt stomach acid before and how it feels like burning in your stomach. Acids typically have a low pH and a higher concentration of H3O+. Bases, on the other hand, taste bitter. You probably wouldn't want to do so, but if you took a scoop of baking soda and stuck it in your mouth, it wouldn't taste very good. Bases typically feel slippery, and you've probably witnessed this when you use soap or if you've ever used any cleaners with ammonia in it. Bases typically have a higher pH and a higher hydroxide or OH- concentration. This is the pH scale. The pH scale is used by chemists it's to rate substances on how acidic or basic they are. This is a logarithmic scale. Now notice that neutral substances are right in the middle and then we get the extremes going out towards the edge. So the more towards zero you get, the more acidic something is, and the more towards 14 you get, the more basic, or we say alkaline, a substance is. You might wanna take a, video, a moment to pause this video and take a look at the various substances on this pH scale to get an idea of some of the things and their various pHs that we see in everyday life. How do we tell the pH of a substance? Well, we have lots of tools to do so, but a couple of the main tools chemists use are acid-base indicators. An acid-base indicator lets you know what the pH of a substance based on the color it produces on whatever tool you use. For example, here's a litmus paper. Typically, you take this piece of paper and you dip it in a solution of whatever substance you're trying to determine the pH, and the color is used on a scale rating to figure out what the pH is. Indicator solutions are also used. This indicator solution is phenolphthalein, and you're gonna get a, a chance to see phenolphthalein in action later on when we talk about titrations. But quite simply, phenolphthalein, when put in a solution, is acidic, or it's clear when it's acidic. When it's neutral, it starts to turn a faint pink, and if it's alkaline or basic, it's very bright fuchsia. Now we talked about hydronium and hydroxide and the differences between acids and bases. Hydronium is an H3O plus molecule. And the reason hydronium is H3O plus is because there's a high concentration of hydrogen in solution. Acids have a high concentration of hydronium in their solution. On the other hand, bases have a high concentration of hydroxide or OH molecules. Let's take a look at some common acids and bases, and you might be able to see what I mean by the last slide. Here's a list of common acids, similar to the list you have on your periodic table. Notice that all these acids start with hydrogen. That's a good key indicator that when these disassociate in water, that extra hydrogen will attach to that water and create lots of extra hydronium. Bases, on the other hand, have lots of hydroxide. All of them have hydroxide. And when these split apart and disassociate in water, that hydroxide will float around, increasing the concentration. Acid and base reactions basically make water. It neutralizes the solution. You're probably familiar with this if you've ever had a stomach pain or with stomach acid, you might have taken an antacid. Typically, we treat stomach acids with a base. So here, for example, we have hydrochloric acid and magnesium hydroxide, a common substance found in many antacids. When those two substances go through something called the double replacement reaction, they typically create a salt and water. Notice again where water is on the pH scale, it's neutral. So this is a great way to treat stomach acids. That's the end of our notes. Take a moment and review and highlight key terms, ponder and ask questions, and summarize and answer the essential question. Good luck.